Hey, I'm John Cannell, and today on Preppy Kitchen, we're making the most amazing cherry pie from scratch. So let's get started. First off, we're making our pie dough. Homemade pie dough is one of the best things ever. It's so delicious, and it's really easy to make too. I want 300 grams or two and a half cups of all-purpose flour right into a big bowl. I also want a quarter teaspoon of salt, and for a little bit of sweetness, I'm adding a quarter cup of granulated sugar. That's 50 grams. Grab a whisk. We're gonna whisk this up just to distribute the salt and sugar. Now I'm grabbing one cup of very cold butter. This is the magic that makes our pastry dough so delicious. I will tell you that if you wanna splurge and buy a nicer butter, this is the moment because it can make a big difference. I'm just gonna cut this up into little pieces and sprinkling it into the flour as I go. Now for the fun part, you could use a pastry cutter for this, but I love doing this by hand. You're gonna crush the butter up into smaller pieces. They'll be between tiny little grains and almonds. And it helps if it's a cold day or if you have cold hands because you don't wanna melt the butter. If you run really hot, go ahead and use a pastry cutter. I'm kind of just mushing this up as I go. If it gets kind of hot, you can just pop it into the freezer for a bit to set back up. I'm doing all the steps for the dough right in this bowl. It's gonna be very low maintenance, so there's not gonna be a lot of cleanup. After just a little bit of mixing, you're gonna see that I have some larger pieces of butter, as well as a ton of tiny little crumbs mixed in. So, I'm ready to move on to the next step, which is adding the ice water. I want about six tablespoons of ice water. I'll show you how to know when to stop adding the water though. If you don't add enough water, the dough just won't hold together. It'll be almost like a graham cracker crust. And you kind of just have to wet the dough enough so it holds together like this. You grab a handful, squeeze it, and it should hold together. So once it forms a clump, you know your dough is hydrated. Look at those clumps of butter throughout. Now I have one more secret to show you for the pie dough. I'm not gonna knead it together. I'm just gonna press it down. It holds together really well. I'm gonna grab a chunk and fold it over. It might seem kind of silly, but I'm creating little layers of butter, which is gonna give me a flakier pie crust. Okay, I said I was gonna do this all in the bowl, and I totally lied because I wanna show you. It's hard to show you in the bowl. Take the dough, press it together. I'm using the heel of my palm, and I'm just gonna squeeze it forward, and that's creating those layers of butter. Then you're gonna take a bunch and just fold it over like that, and continue. Just until it's holding together nicely. So I'm gonna cut it in half, and then just stack it and press. But it's just creating some nice layers for the dough. And if I'm making a pie for you, you better bet there's not gonna be a soggy bottom. It's gonna be golden throughout, crisp and amazing. That's the whole amazing thing about pie dough. Divide your dough into equal pieces. One is for the base. And that one I wanna be a nice circle. So I'm just gonna form it in to a circular lump and pat it down so this gets wrapped up. This one is for the top and I'm gonna make it a little bit more rectangular just because I need to cut the strips. By the way, these are waxed, like, fabric-y paper wraps that you can reuse instead of plastic. These go into the fridge to set up for at least half an hour. The butter is gonna harden again to make them easier to roll out, and all the water you added is gonna seep through the flour, hydrate it, and bring it together so it doesn't fall apart. You need 30 minutes for that, but you can make this a day in advance if you're staging this out. While our pie dough chills, we're gonna make this easy, amazing cherry filling. I happen to have fresh cherries today, but I'll show you how to use canned or frozen cherries as well. This recipe uses about four cups or 650 grams of cherries. These guys are fresh, and I have a couple things to say. One, your cherry pie is gonna look the best with red cherries. You could totally use Rainier or black cherries too. Two, Get ready to pit, and if you have someone to help you, that could be really fun, because this is gonna take a minute. If you wanna use frozen cherries, totally fine. Thaw and drain, but save the juice, because we're gonna use some of it. You don't need a cherry pitter to make this recipe, but let me tell you, it makes your life so much easier. Oh my gosh. We're gonna be having these after we pit them, so you won't have any pits in here, don't worry. Even if you miss one, you'll find it when you have the cherry. My cherries are pitted, my hands are nice and clean for now, and now I'm just gonna have my cherries and do a final pit check just to make sure 
no one cracks their teeth, that would be a not delicious moment. A lot of times at the store, you can get tricked by fruit that looks so beautiful, but has no taste. If you get like a bum batch of cherries, you could still make this pie. I would add a little bit more sugar to sweeten them up. I'd also add some lemon juice and zest to lift it up a bit and like just any tricks you have to add flavor in because you know, of course the flavor is coming from the cherries. So you want them to be their very best. That's where using frozen fruit is actually a great choice because it's frozen at peak freshness. Well, 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 if it isn't my friend, the tooth cracker. That's why I've been cutting these in small batches on this comically tiny cutting board because I wanna really take a look and make sure there's no pits hanging around. My cherries are all prepped, but they are full of water as well as delicious flavor. So we're gonna cook them down thicken them up and make them the best filling ever. You're never gonna look at a canned filling again. Add your prepped cherries into a larger pan or a medium pot. Now we're gonna grab some sugar for the filling. To get started, I want half a cup of granulated sugar. It's 100 grams. Sprinkle it right over. I also want two tablespoons of fresh lemon juice. This will give your cherries a little bit more lift and zing. Just squeeze that right in there. More sugar just makes your dessert more sweet. It doesn't add more flavor or interest. I'm gonna place these over medium heat and we're gonna stir frequently until they're bubbling and juicy and you'll see what that looks like. These cherries look so amazing. As they start to cook, the heat's gonna break them down and they'll release their juice. That juice is delicious and you do not wanna discard it. You just wanna cook the water off so you have flavor left over and we're gonna help things along with cornstarch. You want these to be just the right consistency so it's not hard and rubbery. And it's not falling apart and super messy. It'll just hold together and be delicious. Look at all that delicious cherry juice coming out. While that bubbles away, take a really quick break and add in 50 grams or five tablespoons of cornstarch, as well as half a cup of sugar, right into a smallish bowl. Give that just a really quick whisk. The sugar is actually gonna help break down any bits of uh, cornstarch that are lumping up. Now we're gonna go back and sprinkle this over. This got super juicy, so right now, I'm gonna sprinkle in my cornstarch and sugar mixture. It'll look kind of cloudy at first, that'll totally go away and you'll have this gorgeous thick pie filling, which we're gonna make even richer and more delicious with two tablespoons of butter, just in a add it in clumps and it'll melt right in. It'll give you some kind of added richness and also help thicken things up. You can see how thick it got right away. That means it's ready to take off heat and I'm just stirring the butter in here. This is gonna hang out in a bowl for a while just to cool down because if we added it to our pie dough right now, it would melt the pie dough. So it needs to be close to room temperature. Also, if you don't have enough cherries on hand but you really wanna make the pie or you wanna have some fun and try something new, you can add in other delicious summer fruits. My one caution is not to slice them too thinly because they'll just break down. I'm also adding in half a teaspoon of almond extract. This gives you a really beautiful depth of flavor. It's a very light touch, you're not adding too much. You could skip it if you hate almonds for some reason, it's not a must have. This will cool down for at least half an hour, so by the time my pie dough is chilled, this will be chilled too, and we'll be back with the magic of editing. Towards the end of your chill time, preheat your oven to 425 Fahrenheit. It needs to be nice and hot for your pie. Once your filling's cooled and your pie dough is chilled, it's time to assemble. We're gonna roll out both of our pieces of pie dough into thin circles. For the bottom, we want about 13 inches, and for the top, it'll be about 12. One thing though, flour is your friend here. You do not want your pie crust sticking anywhere. So just keep it floured and keep it moving. If it's a little too cold and starts cracking, let it warm up on the counter for a few minutes. You do not want it to be cracked and splitting apart. And the other thing that you have to be careful of is not leaving your pie dough too thick. We're not blind baking this, it's baking all together with the filling. And you really only need a thin layer of pie crust to hold everything together. You might have noticed that I'm working on a pastry mat. Pastry mats are great because if something goes really bad and this is just like melting apart, take the whole thing right to the fridge, let it chill out and come together and you can keep working it. That looks pretty good to me. This is a nine inch pie dish. 
and you should have like a lot of excess because it has to sink in. Normally I kind of gloss over this section in recipes, but this can be one of the pain points whenever you make a pie of like things sticking, it's not rolling out, you're not sure how thin it should be. So I just wanted to go through everything with you. I think we're ready to, to assemble. The other nice thing is you can just roll the dough on like that. And now you're just going to roll it back on. Take a minute before it goes in just to center it up. And one more important tip is not to stretch the pie dough in, you're going to nudge it in from the end. Because if it shrinks or tears, you're just not gonna be happy. Now, you're just going to kind of adjust it so it's a nice flat layer. This gets set aside and repeat the process for the other piece of pie dough. This time we're gonna cut it into strips and you don't want it to be as thin. It could be a little thicker this time. Also add a little bit of flour to your rolling pin and clean it off. Any bits of pastry dough that stick here will mess things up. We're gonna cut this into one-ish inch thick strips. It's totally up to you. And if you are a fancy pie person who will do the braids and everything else, have at it. There we go. Set that aside, pull this forward. We're gonna fill our pie right now. Look at this. I added a few extra handfuls of cherries just cause I bought a bunch and I wanted an extra full pie. Now back to our strips. The longest ones go in the middle and you can leave like a good amount of space between each strip to have that cherry juice bubbling through. It'll look so good. Now, you know, we lift up alternating sections of our lattice and thread through perpendicular pieces of pie dough. If your pie filling is a little bit wet and starts kind of getting onto all of your lattice pieces, do not worry about it. When it bakes, it'll make it look even more beautiful. So it's totally a good thing. I have some extra long pieces hither and thither, so I'm just gonna give them a trim. And I like to finish mine off with a nice fold and crimp. So go ahead and neatly fold the edge of the pie underneath. It does a couple things. It gives you a stronger edge for the pie. It will also give you more delicious crispy pie stuff to eat, and it'll make it look neat. That looks so pretty, but it would fall apart when you bake it. So now we're gonna crimp the edges. If you want, you could use a fork and just do a crimp down. I'm gonna use my fingers and give it that traditional grandma look that I love. Definitely does not have to look perfect. This looks beautiful now, but it would look sad later if you baked it because it wouldn't have that golden finish to it. To give it the color and shine we want, we're gonna do a simple egg wash. So an egg wash of one egg and about a tablespoon of milk or cream is gonna give you a glossy golden finish that just makes your pie look so much better. Give it a quick mix and you're gonna use a brush to apply it all over the surface of your pie. If you're egg washing, it's really easy to miss a section and you can't even tell, you're like, oh, did, did I miss that? No, no, no. But you will tell once it's done baking and you have this glaring white spot when everything else is like so beautiful beautiful and golden. So really be thorough and make sure you get every little piece of pie dough that's exposed. You can see I don't use a pastry brush. Most of those are pretty much garbage. I'm using more of a fine painter's brush that I've just only ever used for pastry. The final touch on our pie is gonna be a nice sprinkling of coarse sugar. I'm using sanding sugar, which is basically like giant granulated sugar. It'll give you a little bit of extra sweetness, crunch, and sparkle. Our pie is ready to go into the oven, 425 Fahrenheit for 20 minutes, and then you're gonna reduce to 375 and bake for an additional 30 to 40 minutes or until it is bubbling and golden. At any time, you can tint this in foil if it's taking on a lot of color. Just wrap the edge in foil so it's protected and doesn't get too dark while the center is baking. My pie's out of the oven, cooled, and let me show you something. I made this pie yesterday too and shot it for the blog. This was tented halfway through the bake and it baked for the exact same time I baked my pie for today. But you can see it's evenly golden and it looks really nice. It tasted delicious too. This guy got tented just 10 minutes before the end, so it took on more color. And you can see it's considerably darker. I'm still fine with this. If you don't like that, add the tenting on earlier. But the nice thing is I can use some Preppy Kitchen Magic and Do you see the magic of this pie? Look how golden it is on the side. It really had a nice bake. And the best part is I can cut into this now and not worry about getting that first piece out. Hey, Lachlan, come over here. Do you know what this is? Pie. Do you know what kind it is? Cherry pie. It's cherry pie. Would you do me a favor and try it out and tell me how it tastes? I'm gonna take a bite too. Mm. 
Hmm. That was so delicious. Oh, thank you. Well, it got Lachlan's seal of approval, which can- If you can... eat that, makes me want to have another bite. Oh, that's the best compliment of all. I hope you get a chance to make this recipe, and if you like this video, check out my pie playlist.